Getting ready to buy or sell a home? Do you want to help support pro-life organizations? Then you need Real Estate for Life. Get a top-notch real estate agent and support pro-life causes. Go to realestateforlife.org to learn more. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, amen. Two brief points of reflection today on this second day of the 12 days of Christmas. If we wish to get a good outline of salvation history, the high point, so to speak, of the Old Testament, read Acts of the Apostles chapter 7, the whole thing. Today in the epistle, it's just taken some excerpts from that sermon of St. Stephen, which got him martyred. He hits upon the high points, the patriarchs, Moses, the prophets, uh, as a summary of that Old Testament which foretold Christ, right? And so it's a very worthwhile, it's a long chapter, but it's well worth your time to read through the chapters, the seventh chapter of the Acts of the Apostles, um, because as I said, it's a very good summary. It kind of gives us uh, an overview of that Old Testament in which we find all the prophecies of Christ, which are fulfilled in him. The second thing that we find, something that's very important for us in this current place in the history of the church, we find the key for the conversion of bishops. We find the key in today's epistle for the conversion of bishops. You don't need me to tell you that there are a lot of bishops doing very bad things all over the world. And we also have to remember that God gives bishops and priests all the graces they need to fulfill the duties of their state in life. God gives them to them. So when they don't fulfill the duties of their state in life, they're rejecting the graces God gives them. So what's the, what's the key to converting a bishop? It's forgiving them. Forgiving them. Not holding the injuries that they're causing the faithful, they're causing the whole mystical body of Christ, the church. We don't hold them against them. St. Paul was standing, approving of the martyrdom of St. Stephen. And it was by that prayer of St. Stephen, Father, do not hold this sin against them, that converted St. Paul, won the graces of that conversion that takes place two chapters later in the same Acts of the Apostles. It's that act of forgiveness, that act of charity, that brought about the grace is necessary, along with his blood, St. Stephen's blood, that brought about the graces to convert that great bishop and missionary of the early church, St. Paul. If we wish to see the conversion of bishops, we have to do the same. Heroic acts of charity towards these poor bishops who have gone astray. Think of every blog post that you read, every article that you read, highlighting the latest and greatest failure, the princes of the church. If you said a prayer instead, offered some sacrifice instead, how much better off would the church be? How much better off would the church be? How many more bishops would convert and begin to correspond and receive and accept those graces God gives them to fulfill the duties of their state in life to be shepherds of the flock of Christ? So as we think about perhaps New Year's resolutions, make that one of them. Start today to forgive the injuries that the bishops, many of them, unfortunately, 
I've inflicted upon the faithful. I've inflicted upon the church as a whole. Lord, I don't hold it against them. Forgive them. Give them the grace of conversion. And not only will this help the mystical body of Christ, but it will help you to have peace in your soul. It will help you to have peace in your soul. Because you'll realize what the angels promised on that first Christmas night. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to men of goodwill. We have to have goodwill. Goodwill towards God, loving him with our whole heart, mind, and soul. But we also must have goodwill towards our neighbor, those around us. That includes our enemies, those who persecute us. And our Lord says, love your enemies. Do good to those who persecute you. And the best thing that we can do for those who persecute us is to do as that great missionary, St. Paul, says, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil by good, heaping coals of burning charity upon the heads of your enemies. And that begins with that forgiveness, begins with those acts of prayer and penance for the conversion of those who persecute the church then we'll be part of the solution rather than contributing to the problem. And let us ask St. Stephen to give us courage to do this, to be witnesses, martyrs of the charity of Christ on behalf of those enemies, both within and without the church, and thereby continuing, continuing his mission as a missionary of charity, as a missionary of forgiveness, bringing about the conversion many souls. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.